the years that followed the tragic death of Princess Diana of Wales, a man emerged as her steadfast pillar of support in the eyes of the public. He was the confidant who held her deepest secrets, and he boldly proclaimed himself as the only man she ever trusted. This man was none other than Paul Burrell, who dedicated 21 years of his life to serving the royal family, starting as the Queen's footman and eventually becoming Princess Diana's butler. Their relationship was so close that he had the honor of dressing her for her final resting place, adorning her in an evening gown provided by the British ambassador's wife. Moreover, Barol was appointed as a trustee of the Diana Memorial Fund and entrusted with the task of sorting through the princess's personal belongings. His role was often portrayed as that of an obsequious manservant, always two steps behind the princess, and he was said to exemplify the royal household's most cherished value, absolute discretion, as recounted by Tina Brown in her best-selling book, The Palace Papers. However, on that fateful day of January 18, 2001, a bombshell rocked Burrell's carefully cultivated image, even shattering the perception of him as Diana's rock. Scotland Yard executed a dawn raid at his residence in Cheshire, prompted by a tip-off from Princess Margaret's butler, Harold Brown. Brown had been caught attempting to sell a valuable two-foot bejeweled Arabian towel, a wedding gift to Charles and Diana from the Emir of Bahrain. After Brown's arrest and subsequent exoneration, he informed the police that Burrell had been the source of the item. When questioned by the officers about any Kensington Palace items in his possession, Burrell initially denied having any. However, a search of his house quickly exposed his falsehood. Brown writes, It was a royal Amazon warehouse stuffed with paintings, photos, drawings, and china belonging to the princess. Among the findings were 2,000 negatives, including a photograph of Charles in the bath with his children and numerous pictures of the young princes in the nude. There was also a trove of personal notes, including correspondence with William, affectionately referred to as Wombat by Diana, and a vast collection of Diana's clothing, ranging from underwear to dresses and nightgowns. Even the desk Burrell used bore the inscription, Her Royal Highness. As he was driven away in a police car, Burrell was reported to have lamented, I want white lilies on my coffin. Notably absent from Burrell's stash were secret tapes recorded by Diana, in which she detailed allegations against Michael Fawcett, Charles's right-hand man. The knowledge that these tapes could potentially become public sent Prince Charles into a state of full panic mode, according to Brown. Burrell contended that he had informed Queen Elizabeth of his intention to safeguard some of Diana's possessions and that she had granted her consent. While Charles sought to have the charges against Burrell dropped, Diana's mother and sister remained skeptical of his claim that he had received the Queen's permission to take her belongings. They had grown increasingly irked by the former butler's transformation into a celebrity personality, capitalizing on his association with the princess by writing books contributing newspaper columns, and delivering speeches on cruise ships. They had no intention of corroborating Burrell's assertion. Diana's mother, Frances Shand Kidd, was even quoted as saying, I hope his balls burn. Burrell's marital relationship with Maria, a maiden dresser for Diana, was also called into question. The author claimed even the butler's long marriage to Maria was a charade, alleging that Burrell had engaged in numerous affairs with guardsmen, earning him the moniker Barrack Room Bertha. Eventually, in 2016, Burrell and Maria divorced, and he tied the knot with lawyer Graham Cooper. Despite significant reservations within the royal palaces, the prosecution proceeded with Burrell's trial, which commenced in October 2002 at the Old Bailey in London. He faced accusations of stealing 310 items from the Princess of Wales's estate, with a total estimated value of £4.5 million. Then, unexpectedly, something truly extraordinary occurred, a turn of events that can only be described as a moment of magical realism in 21st century Britain, as detailed by the trial of Paul Burrell, the former butler to Princess Diana, took an unexpected turn when it was halted due to an intervention from Queen Elizabeth Hugh herself. This surprising twist occurred on the 11th day of the trial, at 8.30 a.m. when Commander John Yates of Scotland Yard made a startling announcement. 
he revealed that he had just spoken to Sir Michael Peat, who had conveyed a message from the Queen, saying, Her Majesty has had a recollection. The events leading up to this pivotal moment began the previous Friday when Queen Elizabeth was on her way to Street Paul's Cathedral with Prince Charles and Prince Philip for a memorial service. As they passed by the Old Bailey, the Queen noticed a crowd gathered outside the courts and inquired about the reason. Charles informed her that Paul Burrell was on trial for theft, a fact that seemed to have escaped her knowledge until that moment. It was then revealed that the Queen had a recollection of a meeting that had taken place five years earlier, shortly after Princess Diana's tragic death. During this meeting, Burrell had sought an audience with the Queen to explain that he was in possession of some of Diana's papers. This revelation had gone unnoticed until now, and it played a crucial role in the trial's dramatic turn of events. Author Brown reflects on the Queen's actions, noting that when it came to matters concerning her family, she often chose to avoid addressing them for as long as possible before taking decisive action. In this case, she had found what he metaphorically described as a golden bullet, a piece of information that would change the course of the trial. The consequence of the Queen's intervention was that Paul Burrell was set free, and he proudly proclaimed to reporters outside the court that the Queen came through for me. Subsequently, he sold his story to the Mirror for a substantial sum of £300,000, while other newspapers published Burrell's statement and evidence containing explicit details about Princess Diana's relationships with various men, including Surgeon Hasnet Khan. These revelations damaged the reputation of Prince Charles significantly, with details emerging that he had mocked Diana's outfits and referred to her as an air stewardess. Paul Burrell transitioned into a career as a royal commentator and even appeared as a contestant on reality shows. However, in 2008, during Diana's inquest, it was revealed that he had secretly copied letters between her and other members of the royal family. Burrell claimed it was for historical importance, but he faced accusations of breaching trust and confidentiality. Prince Harry, in his controversial memoir Spare, accused the former butler of exploiting his mother's death for financial gain with his book, A Royal Duty. He criticized Burrell for providing a self-serving version of events, stating that he had once been considered a trusted friend by Diana and her family. As of his retirement in 2019, at the age of 64, Paul Burrell disclosed that he was battling prostate cancer, adding another chapter to his complex and eventful life. Dear friend, if you like everything new about the royal family and don't want to miss all the novelties, subscribe to our channel and like it. By doing so, you take part in our development. We work for you.